committed to achieving the monetary policy goals that Congress has given us, maximum employment and price stability. Today, in support of these goals, the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by one quarter percentage point. The economy is very strong and against the backdrop of an extremely tight labor market and high inflation, the committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate. We understand that high inflation imposes significant hardship, especially on those least able to meet the higher costs of essentials like food, housing, and transportation. We know that the best thing we can do to support a strong labor market is to promote a long expansion, and that is only possible in an environment of price stability. The median inflation projection of FOMC participants is 4.3% this year and falls to 2.7% next year and 2.3% in 2024. This trajectory is notably higher than projected in December, and participants continue to see risks as weighted to the upside. The median projection for the appropriate level of the federal funds rate is 1.9% at the end of this year, a full percentage point higher than projected in December. Over the following two years, the median projection is 2.8%, somewhat higher than the median estimate of its longer run value. In my view, the probability of a recession within the next year is not particularly elevated, and why do I say that? Aggregate demand is currently strong, and most forecasters expect it to remain so. If you look at the labor market, also very strong, conditions are tight, and payroll job growth is continuing at very high levels. Household and business balance sheets are strong. And so all signs are that this is a strong economy, in, indeed uh, one that uh, will be able to uh, flourish, not to say withstand, but certainly uh, flourish as well, um, in the face of less accommodative monetary policy. Good morning, 9.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. For anybody who watched the update last night right before I went to bed, and I wanted to stay up, but I was exhausted from the night before because my son stayed up at 5 a.m. I did an update video at 12 a.m. I was walking my son. As you guys know, he had five stitches the other day, so it's been a little harder for him to fall asleep because it's right above his right eye, so when he closes his eyes... You know, I can imagine pulling and whatnot. I've had stitches in the same area. A few more than five, but definitely know that feeling of the pull. So last night I came on. Said Bitcoin was probably going to come down to 40500 And it was going to try to bounce off of it if it was going to. And last night we came down to 40500 I don't say I'm the best in the business for no reason. Um, 40532 is what we came down to. We didn't quite come down to this symmetrical triangle. So this is basically like inception, guys. There's a symmetrical within a symmetrical. And right now we broke out of the short-term symmetrical that started back here in February, end of February. And finally, March 16th, it confirmed the breakout. March 15th, the try got pulled back down to the uptrend. Now we're trying to see where exactly it's going to bounce off of here. Right now... With what we've done, we've come on top of this, but we haven't got the volume to push us to the next section. That's all we're waiting for. We need a volume spike. Unfortunately, the 30-minute volume doesn't look great. It might come back down to the uptrend again. Because as of right now, for a minor cup, this is a fail. Didn't come up high enough. Hello. See, tired. Woo, tired this morning. But you guys get to see me in my... Uh, crazy face this is what happens when uh when you have kids so <laughs> but you guys can all relate so this is what we're looking at and right now unless bitcoin gets some volume it's probably gonna tap this uptrend again it needs volume we've had some whip pull downs in this area so we're gonna see what happens i wish i would have been up last night we'll see if this uh if this comes out or not, but I fell asleep at, what was it, 
right when I walked back inside, my son was asleep, and after I did that update, he fell asleep outside in a stroller, and we were walking, and came back home. I went right to bed, fell asleep by like 12.45, and I woke up at like 8.30, 8.45, and I was looking at the charts just to see how I did, and Ron, I came on, and we talked about how it would come down to the point three three three. I thought was a sweet spot. The hell? Invalid. <laughs> so I talked about how the sweet spot was thirty three three. And I wake up and I'm so mad that it happened. It went down to like 33.29. So I missed it by literally some micro points. 33.260 and I said the sweet spot was 33.3. And of course, you know, like a lot of times when I am not in a position, this happened at 2.30 in the morning. I was so wiped out that I couldn't even stay up until 2.30 because my son had me up all night the night before. And with the exchange prices being different, it, unless I'm seeing it live, it's hard to do it. So... I hope somebody bought in right there. I do because I thought that was the perfect buy-in. I wish I wouldn't have had to stay up the night before because I was I was done. So now the only thing I can hope for is that this does not break out yet and it comes back down and tests this or comes down to the uptrend and gives me a second chance. But that's only going to depend on Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin, like we said, it was either going to come down to that 40300 right on the uptrend, which like I said, it's like Inception. We've got a symmetrical within a symmetrical. The bigger symmetrical goes out from April of last year, of 2021. The smaller one that we're inside of, that we're trying to bounce off of, that we broke out of, and now we're at the top section that used to be downtrending resistance and it's trying to use as support. This used to be the um, smaller symmetrical that it bounced out of. Oh, and this is... So, I mean, this is what we're trying to test. This can even come up just a tiny bit higher. And we might actually be right on the test line. So that's why I said, I think that if we bounce off here, then it would open up the door to about 40, it just depends where you hit, about 42,700 area up here, which would be another 4% for Bitcoin roughly. Obviously, that's if we hold this. There could be a head and shoulders developing. These are always the dangerous parts because we don't have any volume right now in the last couple 30-minute segments, which isn't bad, but we're, we don't have any volume to push up yet. So until we get some volume, we're going to continue. The, if you're going to buy, buy that uptrend. Every time it hits, every time if you're looking to buy, your chance would be when it hits this and holds it. Hits this, buy Hits this and gets rejected sell, you know, until you break out over this too. Something tells me that this isn't over yet. That we've got some kind of pattern starting here. Like, and if we are starting something like this, is it possible that we have to come on this pattern still and come to here before it would shoot out. I don't know. That's what I'm watching, but at any point, Bitcoin can break out. It's just, I'm watching it very carefully because if it fails any of these areas, it's going to come back in and we're in a whole shit storm right now. Because we're stuck. We're stuck in between a symmetrical triangle and a much bigger symmetrical triangle. So it's the inception of Bitcoin. But I do think that was a spectacular call with Ren and even XRP and Bitcoin. I've been talking about this. And XRP came down, touched the top of the uptrend, and now it waved over just a tiny bit. So we've gotten out of our gray area now. Which the gray area is a down channel if it wanted to stay in it. But this is a symmetrical triangle, just like Bitcoin. We have a much larger one that goes out to April of last year, but we got caught up in a smaller symmetrical that to this point, we're still having trouble breaking out of. So we can't go to the top symmetrical until we can clear this and break it. Right now, the top of this is at about 79.2 that we need to clear. We're at 79.5. And Run's going to be the one that is going to end up breaking my heart today because I knew exactly where to buy it. 
But just being too tired from the night before with my son, I just couldn't stay up. Had it been any other night, I'm usually up until 2.30. Isn't that funny? So, hopefully somebody got in on that. Excuse me. So, I'm just waking up here. But that's what I'm seeing in the market. We got XLM. Let me go to the 30-minute time frame. We're not getting that killer volume that we need. And right now, XLM is similar to XRP. It's getting stuck in a section. And if we can't break this, we'll have to come back down to the bottom of the channel and retry. And I'm not... I know we're going to pump. It's just, are they going to bring us all the way back down to the support areas? Nobody really knows. But right now, unless we were to come down pretty hard... Which is possible here this morning. I would say Bitcoin. What would we be looking at? I'd say it's going to keep retesting this uptrend until it can find the proper support. But if it really wants to break the or bounce on the uptrend, it's going to have to do it on the uptrending line. And that's this line right here. So unless we're planning on hitting the uptrend up here somewhere like this. It could have to come down and X could mark the spot here. We don't know. That's what happened with XRP and it marked it perfectly when I drew out these. And we said it's very possible for XRP that X could mark the spot. And guess what happened? We just missed X marks the spot to be the exact bottom, which it was the bottom. It was such a perfect drawing. So that's what we're looking at. Like we said, with XLM... It's the same thing. And if we have to come down, it's not going to be pretty. We want to get top side of 1908. That's a major support in the area. But we also want to stay on top of this line, which is 1884, which we just came down below. So it is possible we have a further consolidation until the breakout. It's just some things are going to be a slight bit ahead. And unless Bitcoin just decides to fall off a little bit, it's going to be hard for some of these other ones to dump. But I think Bitcoin's going to have to respect this uptrend. It didn't have enough volume. That 90 minute said we didn't have enough volume to break out yet. It needs to come down to the up, to this downtrending resistance line. So that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm feeling. XRP Future Millionaire. Make sure to hit that like button. Turn that bell notification to all. And subscribe to the channel if you're new or returning. I want to thank the more than 8,000 subscribers of the channel. That's right. We went over 8,000 subscribers. I personally want to tell you. Join Tom's Army, $9.99 a month. There's simply no reason not to. We've got 262 members in here. We talk so much about what's going on in the current market that you guys can't be away from, you know, you won't be too far away from the information because it's all here. It's all here. So you get this, you get the access to my classes, which are Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, 8 to 9 p.m. And that's right, it's Thursday. It's $5. That's all I charge, $5 a class. And the only way to get that is to join Tom's Army to get the exclusive Telegram. So you get the Telegram. The Telegram gets you the classes. The classes get you knowledge. So make sure to hit that like button. Hashtag be better, do better. Hashtag fun assassins. And remember, help one person each and every day. Because if you don't do your part and I don't do my part, there's really no point.